Welcome to ESP TV. I'm Eddie Piddington from Cunningham's Property. And today I'm with Barry Thomas from Sherlaw's Business Coaching. Barry, um, tell us what you do, mate. Well, you just said it, I'm a business coach with okay. Sherlaw's. I go around and, um, and help businesses figure out how to make their business better. Okay, and is that, I suppose, from a managerial point of view or financial point of view, how they can make more money, or? Uh, I think if a business is primarily interested in dealing with, with finances, they're probably better off going with an accountant. Okay. Um, that's not really my background. Um, Sherlaw's is a company with, um, I think probably, it's something like 40 or 50 coaches in Australia and other coaches in other, other markets offshore. Um, and the coaches come from a variety of backgrounds and have different strengths, and some of them do come from an accounting background. Okay. Um, and if you want a coach who's really strong in accounting, uh, I can certainly refer you to some. Okay. Um, but my background is mostly, um, mostly with IT and startups. And, okay. um, yeah, building new companies from the ground up. Okay, so, wow. Yeah, if it's, if it's pure numbers, um, I can talk the talk, but I'll get someone else in if you want to get serious about it. Okay, so why Sherlaw's? Um, Sherlaw's is a fairly unique company. Um, all of the coaches in Sherlaw's are independent. They are their own, their own businesses. We all work under the, a, a shared brand um, and a shared approach, and a shared set of IP, so we all learn common way of approaching business coaching, yeah. um, but we all run our own shows and, and it's your own clients. We also work in teams, so we have, um, I guess, the support of working with peers, okay. but we don't have to. So I think everyone within Sherl's is probably a common characteristic that we like to be in charge of ourselves. I've worked for myself for um, 12 years now um, okay. and I couldn't go back. So, yeah. so Sherl's is a nice environment there, a nice balance. Um, Sherl's is also uh, very upfront about um, the fact that it balances commercial and cultural. So it's okay. not just about the numbers and revenue and sales and so on. Um, in Sherlock's we're very clear that we may get called in to deal with a specific problem about sales growth or something, but the, the, the cause, the problem, is usually commonly going to be across on the softer side. It's going to be an issue about um, the vision for the business, the alignment yeah. of employees with the, with the business. Why do they come to work each day? Why should they bring their A game to work? Yeah, if they yeah. haven't been given a reason to care. Why yeah, should they care cool. about a business which isn't doing something worthwhile in the world? Um, how are the employees um, um, given um, a piece of, of the action in a sense? I don't just mean being paid, but I mean uh, having a, a feeling they can contribute to the business and make a difference. Um, there's often with small businesses, um, there'll be unspoken problems amongst the owners uh, around um, the division of, of equity and control. Yeah. Um, so a common problem might be one where um, you have a couple of partners, um, one's older than the other, mm -hmm. um, and they could over time develop a tension where the older person is, um, is looking towards retirement. So basically what they're looking for is to get as much out of the business as they can in a fairly short space of time. Yeah, the younger sense. partner is going to have more of an equity focus. They're more concerned with growing the business for the future. And they may not even recognise that there's a tension. But underneath all of their decision making, there's this, this, this feeling one guy wants to grow the business, the other guy yeah. wants to grow that income. Different and that goals. can really, really screw up decision making, which can lead to practical problems with just the feeling the business isn't working. And it, the benefit of a coach could be someone who can come in and go, you know what, guys? You've got this other issue you've got to address first. Yeah, yeah, no, it's um, it's important to have that. I suppose external, you know, you don't have any influences in the business or no. I suppose hidden agendas is probably the word in the business where they may have a bit of a different one. I think you can get very close to something, the thing you're really passionate about, the thing yeah. you do every day. Yeah, it can be hard to see clearly. Yeah, a business coach is someone who um, has been around a while. All of the Sherlock's coaches have, have had senior roles, run their own businesses. They've been around a long time. There's no, there's no really young Sherlock's coaches. We're all, okay. all old fogies. Um, which means we we have a lot of experience to draw on, but we can go into a business and and see it clearly, care about that business. Yeah. But we don't have a dog in that fight. Yeah, no, that's good. Make makes sense. So who's the an ideal client, you know, or, or referral for you at the moment? It's been interesting as as business coaching's evolved in this country. Sherlock's roots is very much in the the, the small to be, small to medium sized businesses. Sure. Um, not too small, they can't afford us, um, but certainly owner-operated businesses. What we've found in the last few years is 
um, an awareness of coaching as an approach is, is seems to be permeating up into the, the larger businesses. Okay, good. So we currently have clients ranging from one man bands up to literally um, you know, the major banks, IBM. Wow. Um, as big as you can get. Okay. Um, the nature of the coaching we tend to do there will be different. Yeah, um, but usually. we 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 operate quite happily at all those levels. Um, and because many of us do have a strong corporate background, we can work comfortably in a big big corporate. For me personally, uh, my preference is definitely the smaller businesses. Okay. Um, I just I prefer to work with owner operators. Okay, it's um it's, it's a really valid point in coaching. I've got it's you come over as more of a business coach, but I have it's not. A, I suppose it is on, on the idea of a personal coach because in real estate we have our own business within a business maybe because we work for ourselves within mm-hmm. a company and. And having the coach for me is really about holding me accountable. Yep. Whereas someone in the office said to me the other day, "Look, I can do it because I'm paying this coach to hold me accountable." Mm. So the office said, "Look, I'll do it." But I know underneath it's too close because mm-hmm. he's a bit of a mate, the guy in the office, yep. and he'll say, "Oh, it's okay, you'll be right. You know, we'll get, mm. we'll do it tomorrow." But the guy I've got externally now, he's a great guy as well, and, and he is a friend. But because he's there purely as a coach, it's very, you know, have you done this? Have you done that? And he's holding me accountable, and you know, the results are already there. So I suppose. Is that somehow how you work, but on our, I think it's on the actual business itself? Uh, yeah, and a lot of the time, the boundary between business coaching and personal coaching is, is not an easy one to see. Yeah. Particularly when you're working with owner-operators, you can get very close to, um, to personal coaching. Um, and I did originally train as a personal coach. Um, and also, I've got a long history in sports coaching, so I'm, I'm very okay. used to working at, it, at an individual level. Um, I think one of the... The core skills of a coach, whether personal or business, is a really, it's a really simple thing, but funnily enough, most people aren't very good at it. It's just being able to listen. Yeah. Um, not listening to the words that are spoken, but listening to the subject. So to hold someone accountable um, is one thing, to sort of go, well, why haven't you done it? Yeah. Okay, that can be somewhat useful. The more interesting question is being able to uh, intuit what the blockages are. Yeah, good. So. Um, if someone fails to do what they intended to do, or if a business fails to successfully implement a project they said they were committed to, um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. What it can be is a real insight into underlying problems for that yeah. person or for their business. Um, you need to step back and um, and listen for those those um, unspoken things. That's where most of the message is going to lie. Yeah, it's awesome. Plenty of plenty of information. So I suppose. One second last thing, if there's one tip you could give to someone out there that owns a business, short snappy tip, what would it be? Get a coach. <laughs> awesome, okay. That's good. And um, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, the Sherlaws website, okay. so sherlaws.com.au. Um, there's also uh, a Sherlaws blog, okay. blog.sherlaws.com.au. Good. I actually run that blog, so oh, a lot good. of my writing is there. Um, and um, what's your mobile number? Of course, the mobile number 0412 425 783. Anytime. Good, mate. That's great. Well, uh, yeah, guys, there you have it. It's uh, Barry Thomas from Sherlock's Business Coaching. Uh, I'm Eddie Piddington from ESP TV. Thanks for tuning in.